Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you some more useful subroutines. I'm assuming you probably just watched my introductory video where we created a hello world sub. That was not a very useful sub. All that happened was the user clicked on a button and a message box displayed hello world. There was no real interaction there other than a button click. In this example, I'm creating with a form, and I usually create my forms uh, in a video, but this one I did not because it has a list box. And that list box has all of the 50 states, right? And so if you ever wanted to add or subtract states at design time, if you click on your list box and you head down to the properties window, here under items, you can edit the collection of items right here. So before I turned on the camera, I deleted Oregon. Not because I hate Oregon, but uh, I just wanted to get rid of a state because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a subroutine which adds states to this list. This is a good example of a sub because it's just going to do something. There's no real reason for it to return anything. So this is one situation where you would use a subroutine. All right, so if I double click go, that's going to kick me on over to the code window and I'm defining the click event for a button. So rather than add the state right here, I'm going to create a subroutine which adds the state. So if I want to create a subroutine, the first keyword is sub. Now I need to come up with a name for my sub like add state. And now it's time to define the parameters. This is the first interesting decision. So if you're thinking about what this does, it adds organ to a list box. So I really don't need to pass it anything because it only adds one state and it adds the same state every time but I'm going to create a more robust subroutine, something that can actually handle multiple inputs. So I am going to use a parameter, and the idea is whatever I pass this thing as a parameter is what's going to get added to the list. So in this example, it's going to be Oregon, but in the next time I run it, it could be California or New York. So if I want to define parameters, I'm going to gloss over the whole by ref by val. Uh, I'm going to create a view video on that in the future. And so I'm going to skip straight to the part where I give it a temporary name like ST, and I need to give it a type. A state sounds like a string to me. And now if this was a function, I would, re I would uh, define my return type here. But since it's a subroutine, there is no return type. Notice that by val is inserted automatically. We'll talk about that later, why that's the case. It's possible that that does not display uh, when you create a subroutine. And that's just uh, preferences, more or less. So what I'm going to do now is I need to know the name of that list box. My list box is called list states, and if I want to add something, the syntax is a little bit more difficult. It's items.add. Now, I don't know if difficult is the right word for that, but it's not as simple as just dot text. So what is it that I want to add to this list box? I want to add whatever it was that I passed it. And that thing that was passed is now known as st. Now, that's not a great variable name, but it works. Notice there's no return statement. It's a uh, it's subroutine. It just does something. So this doesn't do anything until I call it though. There's this kind of idea that I could have a million functions and a million subroutines, but if you never call them, well, they just sit there. So I want to call that subroutine right here and it's called add state. And I want to pass it organ. All right, notice I'm passing it a string. A string is wrapped in quotes and this thing expects a string. Now, if you watched my videos on functions, we talked about parameters and arguments and how they have to match. If you didn't watch those videos, you might want to. So if I tried to pass this thing an integer, it's not going to work, right? Because there is no function and no sub called add state that takes anything other than a string. So now if I run this program, I'm going to show you a couple things. One of them is I can scroll my list and you just got to take my word that organ's not in here. And this list certainly doesn't end with the word organ. If I click go, Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Or did it? When I scroll to the bottom of my list, you'll see the organ was added. And so whether it was in the list or not, you know, I can't really prove that to you, but I can show you that it's adding organs every time I press go. And you can see where you could either use a subroutine like this to build the list in the first place at runtime. Um, but the kind of problem with this is, is that uh, it never asks the user for any input. This would be a much more useful form if I did something like put a text box on there and I'll do that right now so how about I put a text box on here give that text box a name like text state 
and I'm also going to apply a label to that text box because even when I'm just doing a demonstration, I need to, I, I like, it needs to be able to pass the test of could someone figure out what to do with this? So enter state. So the idea that a user will enter a state here and then it'll add that state to the list. Because as this stands right now, it's just going to add organ over and over again. And that's probably not what you want it to do. So I'm going to head into the button, click, sub. I'm going to create a variable called state uh, and a good type would be a string and I'm going to assign it the value that was entered in text state so if I'm going to sit here and digest this for a minute I've created a variable called state of type string and I've assigned it the value that was entered in the text box here so if you look at what's going on here I've collected the data from the user and at this point right here I pass that I'm still just passing organ and I don't want to pass organ I want to pass state so in the original uh, when it just said organ in quotes I was passing a literal now I'm passing a variable so if I run this thing and I enter something like OR and I click go and scroll to the bottom you can see OR got added and now if I do NV click go and it'll add whatever so now we've got kind of a dynamic program and it's actually serving a purpose whereas in hello world um, there was no real reason to create the sub in this example we've created a reusable chunk of code and at this point where it's actually collecting a variable it's actually doing something useful so that's a good example of how you could use a sub I will create another sub in my next video uh, we're, it's gonna be list box oriented so that's gonna add a level of complexity but it's uh, also gonna be kinda interesting so hopefully you'll be there to watch that